is possible in certain situations to donate organs after the declaration of death by circulatory criteria. There are, however, a multitude of logistical and ethical considerations. Logistically, the organ procurement operation needs to happen as soon as possible after the declaration of death. This means that informed consent must be taken beforehand and that the transplant team must be able to operate immediately. You might ask, where does this leave the dead donor rule? The principle still stands. Similar to how you would register your wishes to be an organ donor on the organ donor registry during your lifetime, these discussions and arrangements also happen during life. However, they only ever take place once the treating clinical team has decided all treatment options have been exhausted and ongoing treatments are now prolonging the dying process. Let me give you an example. A 41-year-old mother of three presented with a sudden onset headache five days ago. She had urgent endovascular coiling of her subarachnoid aneurysm, but dropped her GCS to 2T after the procedure. A repeat CT scan showed a massive stroke. She has remained GCS 2T for the last 36 hours, but has occasional spontaneous respirations and a cough reflex on suctioning, so is not brain dead, although her pupils are fixed and dilated and she has no response to pain. Neurosurgery in conjunction with the ICU team have assessed her injury as non-survivable. The decision is taken with the family to withdraw non-beneficial treatment and palliate her. There exists the potential to support organ donation in this setting. The transplant team is contacted and agrees the patient could be a suitable donor. The family is then approached for consent. They say that it's something the patient would have wanted to support, if possible, and are happy to sign consent after everything has been explained. Further arrangements are then made. This entails a medical workup of the donor, tissue typing bloods, and detailed planning regarding when and where treatment will be withdrawn. Now you will recall that I said the potential exists to support organ donation. This is because not all patients in such situations proceed to organ donation. Donation can only take place once the patient is declared dead. The dead donor rule is always respected. Furthermore, no intervention can take place during withdrawal of treatment aimed primarily to hasten death. That would be an obvious conflict of interests. The primary focus has to remain on the patient and the prevention of suffering, right to the end. This is why the transplant team is not involved in the withdrawal process or in the certification of death. Morphine is typically used as an intravenous infusion to alleviate any perceived pain and reduce respiratory discomfort. It's important to note that there is no maximum dose when palliating a patient. As long as the aim of such treatment is to relieve suffering, any side effect, such as respiratory depression, is not considered the proximate cause of the patient's death. There are people who object to donation after circulatory death because by altering the timing of withdrawal and adding in medical workup of the donor, you are subjecting a living person to interventions that are of no benefit to them. They are, however, only ever done in accordance with the wishes of the patient or their surrogate decision maker after consent has been signed and that is only ever after a separate decision to withdraw treatment has been made. Now you will also recall that I said the organ donor operation needs to happen as soon as possible after death is declared. This has huge logistical implications. Why all this rush? This is because the organs suffer damage during the warm ischemic period. This is the time when they are warm and not being supplied with blood. If this period is too long, the organs will be irreparably damaged and will not function when transplanted. The warm ischemic time is influenced by the dying process, which is unpredictable and varies between patients. This is in stark contrast to a brain-dead donor, where circumstances are much more controlled. Organs have different abilities to recover from warm ischemic damage. Kidneys are the most tolerant, followed by lungs and then liver and pancreas. In the United Kingdom, the cutoff period to donate kidneys is two hours, lungs one hour, and for liver and pancreas, 30 minutes after death declaration. The heart is exquisitely sensitive to warm ischemia and not able to be transplanted from these donors, although some centers are pushing this boundary. Kidneys, lung, and pancreas transplants from donors after circulatory death have as good long-term outcomes as transplants from donors after brain death. Liver transplant outcomes show lower but still acceptable patient and graft survival at one year. 
delayed graft function, which is when the transplant doesn't work straight away, occurs more frequently in recipients of these organs. For kidneys supporting such cases with dialysis is well established and patients can go back onto regular dialysis while they wait for their transplant to start working, up to six weeks in some cases. Steps taken to reduce the warm ischemic time include having the transplant team physically scrubbed up and waiting in theater. The time taken to wash hands and gown would add to the warm ischemic time. The location of withdrawal can also affect the warm ischemic time. We let the location of withdrawal be decided by the family. If they wish to be present during the final moments, we aim to give them time in ICU and then transport the body to theater. If the family does not wish to be present, then we let them say goodbye in the ICU and the treating clinical team withdraws treatment in theater. Not all patients who have ICU support withdrawn will pass away. For some, it can take days, months, or years. It is obviously inappropriate to consider these patients for potential donation after circulatory death. There are scoring systems that can be used to predict the chance of a patient naturally arresting within the time period that permits organ donation, but they are not perfect. In America, transplant teams stand down approximately 40% of the time. Patients who have absent brainstem reflexes, are on inotrophic support, require a higher inspired oxygen concentration, or require higher ventilatory pressures, are more likely to arrest soon after treatment withdrawal. Doctors don't always refer all appropriate patients for potential organ donation. Referral triggers can help advise doctors as to when it is appropriate to initiate discussions with the transplant team. These are typically whenever a patient is to be assessed for brain death, or in a patient with a catastrophic brain injury, when the patient has a GCS of 4 or less, not explained by sedation, or there is a plan to withdraw futile life-sustaining therapies. Using such triggers allows a timeless discussion about the potential for organ donation with the family. Even in patients where a quick death is anticipated, it may not occur within a time frame that permits organ recovery. This eventuality must be planned for and a location arranged for ongoing comfort care should this be required. It is very important to have a protocol in place for donation after circulatory death to ensure a standardized process. There are multiple variations on how withdrawal can be handled, where, how, and by whom. In some countries, there is a national protocol while in others, like the United States, each hospital must have their own protocol specific for their environment. A protocol needs to include issues like when can the donor be given intravenous heparin. This medication serves no purpose other than to help preserve organs for transplantation. It's most effective if given prior to cardiac arrest, but this means giving medication of no benefit to the donor prior to death certification. Some consider this to be a violation of the dead donor rule. In our protocol, we do administer intravenous heparin prior to circulatory death, as it is not felt to hasten death in any way and to be in accordance with the patient's wishes to support organ donation. Protocols must also specifically state accepted time limits, not only when they end, but also when they start. In the United Kingdom, the time cutoff starts at the point of functional warm ischemia, which is when the saturation is below 70% and the systolic blood pressure is below 50 millimeters of mercury. In South Africa and Australia, time cutoffs are set from the time of extubation. In South Africa, we currently only procure kidneys and livers from donors after circulatory arrest. We use a one hour cutoff for kidneys and a 30 minute cutoff for liver. To recap, donation after circulatory death is possible, but differs in many aspects from donation after brain death. The dead donor rule is still fulfilled and informed consent always required. Organs do suffer some damage related to the donation process, but outcomes are good.